Hello and welcome to Michael and Ivanka's Grand Podcast, a weekly podcast where two friends crystallised our thoughts in a 143 episode therapy session um, over a video conference with one of us in London and the other in Brach. What's the name of your town? I always forget Sutivan. Sutivan. I know this. Uh, my name's Michael Forrest. And I'm Ivanka Magic. And this week we're going to talk about ageing. We are. We're getting old because we're both old timers by some standards <laughs> but we're so young too uh, why did you want to talk about aging because oh, i'm doing an adult social care project that i've been for the last two or three weeks which always brings aging massively into focus i find i was listening so. to that guilty feminist uh, podcast episode with the way they're interviewing the code breaking sisters because they've got this, and it's basically a 95-year-old and a 97-year-old woman <laughs> kind of talking about breaking codes in the war wow. and falling off bluffs, things like that. It's all right. What's a bluff? Uh, no, just like a cliff. And <laughs> you have to listen. But no okay. one used the word bluffs, but I just, it just, I just wanted to use the word bluff. Sounds good, okay. doesn't it? Um, aging. How? Yeah. So you sort of pitched it as like aging versus like n- not aging. Which, well, immortality. You know, we immortality. know you're obsessed with living together uh, forever. Living, living, living together, together. <laughs> forever. Um, yeah, we can we can contrast it with immortality. We can talk about you know sort of aging gracefully versus aging uh, c- curmudgeonly or um, disgracefully. Disgraceful. <laughs> we could uh, we could. I was thinking suddenly I was thinking about uh, tan France and like you've got to dress age appropriate. Um, that's a brilliant impression of tan. Um, just age appropriate. Just being like growing it, being acting your age, I suppose, is is a hard thing for yeah, some well, people. Yeah, but also, yeah, moving around, staying active, aging yeah. in a way that you get to still do things you enjoy doing, or finding things to replace them with that you really enjoy doing, or. Uh, I think I'm more into aging disgracefully than mm-hmm. gracefully. Though I do often put clothes on and say to my husband, "Can I? Can I still wear this? Is, is this okay for a woman of my age and my stature?" Mm. Um, There's lots uh, of I'm, fears around aging, aren't there? Really? Like, um, yes. I, 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 I've always been afraid of getting old and not having achieved anything. Um, and I still feel that way, and I have done since I was 13. So I guess sometimes you just got to accept that uh, there are no big. Well, there are moments, but then even those moments just disappear into your memory, and you just got to, like, you know, existence yeah. isn't about. I don't know. There's just more moments. It's just a lot of moments. Um, and I, you know, I've always, I've always, I, my, my, my sort of man crushes are usually a sequence of increasingly older men aging gracefully that I want to sort of emulate so <laughs> we can talk about a bit of that um, and I yeah, I, just, yeah just talk about all that the, I mean and I suppose it's very, it's, there's a different different aspects to aging uh, as a man and a woman I suppose it, it for sure. has different yeah, connotations yeah, yeah. so you it know does. come here for biting analysis intergender <laughs> analysis of aging right music <laughs> Ivanka magic it's going I think it's going well I've had a nice week I have slightly less work which means that then I can fit in more family time and so yesterday I went for a very nice walk with my five-year-old along the seaside we clambered over rocks and picked up rubbish (laughs) and discussed people and she gave me some yoga tips who gave my you shoulder. Some, she, your, my five-year-old. She's okay. like, "Mummy, you should do this." And she did that that yoga move where you wrap your ha- arms around each other. So now hold it. Is that helping your shoulder? And I was like, oh, <laughs> "Where's this come from?" So I dutifully did what she instructed me to do. Now the other arm. Okay. Um, so yeah, we had a nice time. It was just nice. I I'd set out this idea that we were going to do this big loop that's about seven k, and very quickly remembered that mm. she was five. <laughs> and, that, and that I should just enjoy the pace that we can achieve 
and you know just take an hour and a half doing 3k clambering over the rocks so it's nice mm. there you go that's good that's my nice story of the week how are you michael how am i michael um i uh depressed a little bit depressed uh because i sort of soft launched done good this week uh done good uh is av- just available to sign up um <laughs> implemented a sort of waiting list a queuing system for all of my signups <laughs> uh, in case i couldn't deal with the volume <laughs> of two you people are... that have clicked on it but anyway i did do that <laughs> to do a blog post that i've been working on for ages and uh, at least you liked it ivanka that made yeah. me no, i was glad for that you tweeted it as an in- uh, ivanka is an influencer with her i like, am i am and nearly 10,000 Twitter followers compared to my poultry 300. Um, she she tweeted, I thought, this is it. And then, like, it, it just didn't really do it. I did see, like, if... Um, yeah, I, I just got a bit depressed because, like... Uh, but I'm trying to remind myself that the last time I did release something like this, I did actually get a really nice response and some friends that I hadn't talked to wrote big things about it, so which I've got up pinned to my uh, wall uh, to remind me that sometimes it does work but this one was a it was one was a bit annoying that i put a lot of myself out there i basically done this timeline infographic and sort of hung a blog post about my weird year of um uh disaster capitalism covid <laughs> to making something ages ago and that selling and making the things that i'm making now not selling uh but yeah that, but it's sort of like now i'm sort of readjusting to okay that's the thing that i started planning back in june is i've had this post-it note finish that since like june and i finally was able to throw that in the bin this week um so I've started working on 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 the app that promises if I can get some features into it to be a bit more fun. So I'm trying to sort of like focus on the new world and not give up and not get too depressed. It was only like one day of depression and then but I still got some work done. So it's OK. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I'm good. But um, people, yeah, if you want to go to Dunga.app, like I would love to. I, I think it's brilliant. The thing is, like, I've fin- I've more or less got it. Although, of course, if, as soon as Ivanka used it today, she sort of spotted something that was awkward about it, and I'm like, yeah, it's it's it needs some tweaking still because there's there's this that I'm sort of balancing the super advanced use cases that I'm using and also trying to make the kind of first use experience still make sense. So it's like I've got like 15 different lists of tasks and i'm organizing them and managing that and doing all that and there's loads of bugs to fix with that but then there's also the first time you use it it's got to like make sense and there's no point having a drop down menu to select a list when you've only got one list like things like that so i'm working out some kinks but if people do want to sort of sign up and if you're a podcast listener just let me know you can i'll i'll give you a free subscription for a bit how about that (laughs) Um, I think it's. I enjoyed it this morning. That's good. Uh, I put that. That said, Nick and I had sat up last night and written this enormously unachievable list of all life admin <laughs> tasks that we should do, and the ink was very like multi level list from build a new pagoda in the garden <laughs> to buy some new dishcloths. Uh, so mm. you know it's very variable. But I just literally this morning shoved them all in yeah and then uh uh actually managed to tick a couple off Ooh. and then including because we want a radio for our kitchen because in right uh because we we have a very rubbish one uh which is actually a light mm. <laughs> and so we need a, a, a proper one so I've, i did some research on that so i've sent some links to him and so right. now the the task is in progress it's in play Aging. Where should we start? Um, well, we're both in our forties. You we're only both. just barely. I'm forty-two. 
What are you talking about? Well, you're, in, you're in the early 40s. <laughs> early 40s. I'm, I'm 46, <laughs> so I'm heading towards 50 now. Oof. So that's exciting. I don't, I'm not, um, things that may prompted my thoughts on this episode were primarily because of this user research I'm doing and therefore mm. it's what's front of mind at the moment. But in general, I think we are both uh, uh, the kind of people who try and look after ourselves, mm. which is, you know, off the back of that whole um, quantified self conversation. Like the objective is to just stay well yeah. um, for as long as possible. But then, but there's other aspects of ageing that I really enjoy watching. Like... I was in a bakery the other day and a la- the lady who works there is definitely well in her 50s. Mm. A man walks, I'm walking with a mask and I'm being served. Then a man walks in without a mask behind me. She just went, if you are not going to wear a mask, wait outside. Mm. And he was like, sorry, sorry. So like authority <laughs> she, that she, comes with age. Authority <laughs> of being, I think, and there's something very specific about female authority at that age. Mm. They're like, they've had... You know, probably children, possibly grandchildren or racial looked after. And there's something about them that just like, just don't mess. I haven't got the time, <laughs> the energy. I can't be bothered to pander to your nonsense. It's the same as that doctor I talked about and the, the eye yeah. doctor here. And she was like, mask over the nose, mask over the nose. And I look forward to having that sort of, to reaching my 50s, being a sort of post-menopausal woman and going, you know, and people just going, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I think it's a, a thing that I um, aspire to. Uh, do you know? Do you, I mean, this is this is not quite right. But um, I, I saw this thing last night. I, I ended up on a fellas is it gay subreddit, and it's like um, uh, fellas is it gay to cry of joy? Damn, this makes a homie cry. And just seeing these tweets where people are like, oh god, that's a bit uh, fe- effeminate. And one of them was um, fellas is it gay to have sex with older women? And like this tweet saying feminism is 99% wrong, but the one part it did get right is that women are essentially men. It just doesn't start happening until they're 30. By the time they're 40, they're fully fledged males. And if you have sex with them, you might just be gay. Um, so this is a thing that someone has written on the internet. I just, I just uh, like, I mean, where do you even start with that? You go to all sorts of corners of the internet that I don't delve into. Jesus. Well, it's because I'm on the pointlessly gendered subreddit, which is like highlights all the stuff, you know, pink things and blue things for no, like male, like packaging of like weights that that, like hand things that go up. They start off with a relaxed lady and then like an angry lady and then a man. And then it goes up to like gorilla for the heaviest (laughs) ones. But yeah, like uh, there's, but if you look at it in terms of authority, I suppose like as you get older, even as a woman, you develop even, the, the, the masculine the quality of authority <laughs> and being respected. The, uh, the, the societal <laughs> acceptance of your authority. Yes. People don't stop referring to you as girl <laughs> and uh, and start sort of just going, OK, mum, OK. So there are, there are things to look forward to, I think, as an ageing woman. Yeah, and there's that sort of wisdom. Like, I always feel like the first time I felt entitled to try and be wise was when I was like 30 or something and Bruce recommended uh, Jeffrey Lewis this uh, sort of alt folk singer guy and, and I was listening to his song and I was like that's very wise and then I looked at his age and it was like he was 27 and I was like okay this person who is younger than me is exhibiting wisdom it's time to start being wise um but a shortcut to that for a man is if you can grow a beard you can sort of like uh, of get course. there early and stroke it Stroke when it. You're talking. But, and I, <laughs> Nick and I were yeah. having a conversation. Nick's grown this enormous beard at the moment. Mm. This is COVID beard, enormous thing. And we were having a conversation about something, and he just kept scratching his beard. And I was like, <laughs> "Stop! If you do that again, you're going to have to leave the office." Like, oh. He said, "I can't help it. I've got a beard now. I have to stroke it." No, you don't. It's he, really irritating. Is he one of these beard oil users? I'm just going to oil my. He beard. tries. He's not a very sort of groomy person but he has got beard oil so he sort of strokes and and combs this <laughs> enormous father christmas beard uh my so dad, yes my dad told me you know my dad's trained as an architect and used to have to go on a building sites as a uh, sort of early 20s i've told you this on the podcast yeah, i'm pretty sure have, yeah. early 20s um short young looking person and the beard was his sort of way of doing it but now he's got like a child 
he's trying to like be Charles Darwin. So he's got this right. big white Charles Darwin beard. Nick's kind of receding, so he's got very short hair and this enormous beard. He looks quite like Karl Marx because the way that the that some of the ginger, brownie ginger is left in the beard, it sort of definitely has some Karl Marx about it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yes, yeah, so men men and aging different to women and aging. Mm. Thing. Uh, aging, and feature of aging, the hair thing, the new <laughs> hairs. That's that's. <laughs> I just turned into bad observational stand up comedy now. But like, um, I I went on a holiday with a group of older men a few years ago. <laughs> they were sort of like maybe eight nine years older than me. Ten, and I remember getting some advice about um. Like nose hairs. <laughs> so sort of like early thirties person from some mid forties people. Um Watch sort of out saying for this. like you you worry that they'll come back stronger, but actually like if you keep pulling them out, they sort of give up after a while. <laughs> so I've always just I've been tried to get ahead of that. Um I'm grateful that I had a that someone when I was younger encouraged me to start moisturising. I think that's helped me uh, age more uh, gracefully. <laughs> Is that graceful or does it just mean that your skin doesn't hurt? Oh, because I've always had very dry skin. Um, <laughs> so um, it's important that I moisturise. But I think it does mean that you don't, sort of, as you approach your mid-30s, don't start getting that, like, leathery thing coming through that, like, I think other... You see, like, some people... I think, I, I you know, I, I got five years back when I quit drinking. I was always grateful for that. Um, but, like, that... Because I, I always feared that, like... you Because, like... As you get into your 40s as a heavy drinker, an older, like, you get that red-cheeked, kind of, like, puffy, sallow... A brewer's what, tan, they Yeah, it. it's, and it's like, I just didn't really want that for myself. I wanted to be... Um, I was looking up to... Because I, I've always... I was looking up at, up to, like, Robert Downey Jr. and going, like, he's 40? And he's running around being Iron Man? That's amazing. I want that. How do I get to that? Um, and now that I am 40, I'm like, I think I've more or less got that. So you I'm are Iron Man. For proud sure. of myself for, for <laughs> kind of like I'm I've never been stronger than I am at the moment. Um and now I've looked I'm looking up to the sort of seventy year olds in your um that documentary on Netflix that are all like buff. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, you know, if you can be seventy he's and and still super fit and healthy. And I've got an uncle as well. So like I just like find someone that is a sort of template for an uh you know, aging well. And I'm just trying to copy what they do, really. Yeah, I think I'm not... Um, I think there is that. I was quite lucky in my 30s that I sort of got almost adopted by some women that were about 10 years older than me and mm. they sort of, like, mentored me a bit. Mm. And generally, like, they've got older, I've got older and it's it sort of... It's been a nice way, nice group to follow in a way. So I definitely see that mentory bit. But I think for... for um, one of the things that also comes there's like this opposite of wisdom which is the no I, I don't want to I don't I don't care I don't want to I don't and I don't know if that's certainly yeah no I don't want to do that I don't want to exercise I don't want to get out of bed I don't want to eat mm. well I don't and it, I don't think it's necessarily like this kind of belligerent old age um uh that that happens to some people I so they thought- just won't yeah, I was sort of as you, you sort of like your beliefs, who you are kind of solidifies a bit, which is nice in some ways because it stops you being like, hey, I like that. Also, maybe I don't like that. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. uh, did I? Yeah, I think this. No, maybe I think the opposite as well. Um, the thing that sort of a 20s person will have, you can start to go, no, this is what I think. And I'm prepared to face the consequences of that. But that can... So that it's useful in some ways, but if if taken too far, it can definitely sort of like close you off to possibilities. And um, I I don't remember this. That there's this idea that as you get older, you lose the ability to learn. But someone told me I when think, I was younger, like you know, I'm still like in my forties. I'm still like learning stuff all the time, and I think it's really important. <laughs> I love the fact that your reference point yeah, for aging yeah, yeah. is in your forties. Yeah, well, now that like, I am. I'm, I'm like so. I don't think I've maybe. I don't know. So my mum was widowed when she was 46. Right. And so that's kind of a... But since then, she's probably lived a different decade. Every decade has been something new or something different mm. or something like she's not a person who's fixed yeah. in any way. Yeah, that's, so, that's... you know, it's like picking up new things, learning new things. She's That's just sort of person that she is, which is possibly enforced by this 
early widowhood Mm. but also she's just i think if my father had been alive they'd still be doing random shit because that's kind of who they were do you know know what i mean it's like so she's quite a use my mum's in her 70s early 70s but she's a a useful 70 rather than a old lady um and i've repeated to her many times that she cannot talk to me about being an old lady until she's at least 80 80 is that the because these days that's really well, kind of when you can start sort of claiming to be an old person up until that point i think it's like a it's like oh come on well yeah but older, your definition you know maybe. i'm i'm harking back to a previous version of myself's idea of what someone old is which now i inhabit and you know you don't really notice yeah, yeah. it once you're in it so your your no. idea of what old is always keeps moving ahead like <laughs> you know as long as i've got you know I'm, I'm sort of shooting for for rich 50 one way or another i don't i want to have like all the nice things by 50 <laughs> <laughs> All, all the, the nice things, things that all matter. All the things. I'm not um, saying. Yeah. I'm not saying private island. I'm just saying millionaire, <laughs> which is the baseline for being able to have anything nice in this city. Um, um, <laughs> good point that that this city. Yeah. <laughs> or any city, probably, really. Um, well, I don't know. Don't know. Um, but you know, whenever I worry about. Uh, like I just, I always try and remind myself that I'm gonna be going. I'm not gonna stop doing stuff. I'm always gonna keep. I'm gonna. So I've still got like at least another forty years, I reckon. Of, yeah. And I did. That's, that's ages. Even though it goes quicker, it goes quicker, doesn't it? As you get <laughs> older. Apparently so. Time goes know. quicker. Um, does it? I don't know. It does seem to go quicker. Know. I have to say. Like, yeah. Um, I've got. Yeah. I think I've got a. Um, I think having the small child makes it all tick over a bit faster right because you know the the child's absolutely delighted with every month gained or every year gained. i yeah. am five and i am older than you and you are four and i am bigger than you yeah. and all this is all it's all about winning at the who's got the bigger number in their birthday yeah, yeah. Older. and yeah. so sort of it's there's this constant canter towards the next but <laughs> when am i going to be six when is that is that soon when is it um so uh yeah, i think that does accelerate things a little bit of oh, that sense of uh, speed mm. but I also th- I think the other side for me about the whole aging thing is one because I didn't have a child till I was 40 mm. so I feel obliged to hang around for a bit so I can be yeah. helpful you know if I can mm. so it's that sort of obviously you know nothing's a given but there's this there is an incentive to sort of say you know, if I can help you out, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to. If she has a kid when she's forty, mm. I'm not sure I'll be much cop as a babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's a poor girl going to have like a, a tiny baby and an old mother going eh, being a mentalist. I'm, I'm very glad that I've always been worried about my doing something to my back because I think that's and you haven't been as lucky in that. But like, uh, it's, it's it's those things that you can't fix. Is yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, yeah, that yeah. You yeah. You I reminded was, me very well that like when I was literally on my thirty third birthday, this doctor was like, right, you've got this thing with your back now, and it can't get better. It's only going to get worse mm. unless you look after. It. It's like what i am not indestructible yeah. <laughs> what since when how did this happen so yeah i think there's that that bit of the aging thing once you've hurt something or damaged something it's probably done yeah i'm always i'm always afraid like because i've always heard like when you're in your 40s like now when something goes wrong it's just like the doctor's just like yeah well, that's that's that hurts now your knee hurts. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I don't think that's. But then I read that. You know, I read that Born to Run book, and that was uh, that was enlightening. It was um, sort of like, well, actually, maybe they don't know everything, and <laughs> you can uh, you can think that you're prone to permanent injuries, but it's actually just the flipping Nike industrial complex giving you shoes that damage your knees, and if you just uh, run in your special feet shoes, then you'll be fine. So. I, <laughs> 
This is Do you run in your special feet shoes? I haven't you been run running in? for ages. I've just been riding on the bike. So um, oh. I'm kind of out of the habit of running. But my plan is to 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 get some some shoes to try out but i just haven't got around to it to be honest like um, mm. but now i don't wear my comfy trainers to go for walks i wear my um like shoes that have a bit less under them so that because i feel like it's better to build up your foot than to like pamper it and then all of that energy gets just bounced into your knees instead which is basically what I think what's supposed to happen with running shoes. So, you know, watch Ooh. out for that. There's a <laughs> <laughs> just advice for people getting old. Um, something, uh, something, I did see that something, and I wish I could link to it, but I can't remember what it, where I saw it. But I think, you know, we have this idea that children are built to learn and that as you get older, it's harder to learn. But I saw one argument, which was actually, well, children are forced to sit still and try and learn in a sort of structured environment. And adults are it's very easy for adults to just sack it off and not bother with it. <laughs> and um, actually, if you, as an adult, put in the discipline that you're forced to as a kid, then you're perfectly capable of learning whatever you put your mind to, which is one of the yeah. reasons that I was like, okay, I'm going to learn some languages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm just going to make some space in my life for that and just do it every day um, and just be disciplined about it the way that a child would have to be. And maybe we'll get, you know, have something that I didn't have before. Well, I think generally they're proving lots more about the fact that you don't this idea that you stop being able to learn or that it slows down massively. I think I've read as well about that mm. being total nonsense. One of the people I interviewed this week, her dad started his PhD when he was in his 70s mm. and finished it. And right. he's now 96. Yeah. So, so there you go. Yeah. That's that's that's, and then just in terms of the sort of solidifying of beliefs, and I, I think um, part of I, I, you know, I was listening into yesterday on on uh, that like the students that the uh, imperial students being introduced to their course and it's enrollment. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> And um, they were, like this whole call was like they were explaining like the Dunning Kruger effect to them and things like that. But like that thing, you learn a little and then you think you know everything, and then you learn a bit more, and then you realise you don't know anything. I think maybe part of that, like people kind of getting set in their ways, is maybe a little bit of Dunning Kruger Kruger effect, and like you think that you know everything there is to know about yeah, something now because you're eighty. Um, yeah. but, well, because you're like forty. Like um, I think those people that are kind of become rigid. I think there's a little bit of it. You don't really realise how little you know. Uh, you just yeah. you've got enough to know, think that you know something, but not enough to realise how little you know yet. And um, um, and then if there's no incentive, if you're not the type of person that's going to push through that, then you you may just sort of like. I think that's what kills people probably. Like they just sort of think they know everything. They stop learning. They stop changing, and they just sort of like what do you do? You just drink, get older, get fatter retire whatever that is i i think like if you don't feel like you've got any value to anyone else you're just a burden on other people like how can you expect that to be a healthy way I to think, live I, I think this is one area where you know the whole personal responsibility thing that we talk about mm. there is there's two sides like if you if you know that you can be an active agent in your own aging then and you accept that and do stuff, then you can live a very enjoyable, growing, you know, have activities, do stuff, or, or not have activities, or what, be able to change the own, your own TV channel or whatever <laughs> it might be. Having more people taking responsibility or taking agency in their own ageing, I think, would is a good thing for society. For those that don't, I don't know if they've ever been introduced to the concept that they can yeah. Do you know what it's like? Mm. Do you know if you, you can learn something at any age? Yeah. It's not that, oh, I'm 60 now, therefore yeah, I'm, I'm just nearly you know, dead. There's no yeah, point it's like, now. <laughs> but I remember my grandpa in his 80s. It's like uh, Nelson Mandela's Long Walk to Freedom book came out. My grandpa, who's a massive reader, he and I, like, he and I were very similar. We'd just sit there when I was little and I'd read, he'd read. Very companionable. Mm. Nobody said anything to anyone. <laughs> and he, we got him Nelson Mandela's Long Walk to Freedom maybe when he was 85 he was like oh can't start reading that I'll be dead before I've finished <laughs> I was like oh okay <laughs> it's like and he started like not buying new shirts so he's walking around in frayed shirts yeah. 
Well, what's it's, the point? I'm going to be dead soon. It's like, so my mum like marched him to the shops and bought him some new shirts. It's like, no, you cannot walk around looking like that. It's definitely a mindset <laughs> that people can start adopting pretty early. It's like, and, can, and it's yeah. the same thing. It's like, well, what's the point of tidying up? It's just going to get messy again. And it's a sort of sign of kind of depression, I think. Like, yeah, yeah, if I anything, think. like, I mean, every little, but then you see someone with a sudden cancer diagnosis that finds out that they've only got like a year to live and cramming in all these things into that time and sometimes that like deadline can be a big motivator so i don't know what the difference is between someone that takes that as a motivating factor uh, and well i now i know how long i've got i know how long i've got to achieve something yeah, yeah. but I, but i think that's the whole like well i think i don't know i like yeah. it's a short answer i wonder if it's something to do with the sense that you're there is no further decline like you're not going to age slowly over 20 years it's mm. like this is it you're going to get ill really soon you're not going to be able to do stuff so do it but I think also this is going back to the beginning thing where you started with gender and aging yeah. S- societally aging is not celebrated or respected we know this it is mm. particularly not celebrated for women mm. you know there's like you go for so but that you know like a bit of celebrating the fact that we with age comes wisdom, comes experience, comes an ability yeah. to learn and join up dots, comes the opportunity to try out new things because there is, for most people, less pressure on earning a living. They don't have to look, they have fewer dependents, potentially children have left home. They can enjoy their grandchildren, but then send them home yeah. <laughs> for discipline. And general. you know, for many people, that is the reality of aging or, yeah. you know, sort of the their older years but not necessarily their approach to aging and I think we're never told that we can yeah and also like I think even I like if I look back uh, I was like do, do I yearn to be 28 again not really I don't know how much like do people really have that sort of rosy oh, I remember not having enough money and that being a whole thing all the time yeah, 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 and yeah. like not being sure and scared and really not because like I've done I've figured so many things out over the years that like i don't want to go back to not having knowing those things and being completely like a mess the whole time yeah, yeah. i've i've thought about this uh I don't know, recently i was thinking about it and they um i was thinking about the fact that i love being who i am today you know like it's uh, mm. all the things i've picked up i'm quite happy with who i am and where i am and all those things but in my head, I can still dance on tables in a club. <laughs> it's like a, I can still, it's like a, I don't think in a weird way or when I, when I, in my mind's eye, I still look, I don't know if it's look the same or I'm the same person that I was then. I've just picked up more experiences. And I think there's this weird, like, I th- don't know that anybody, I always feel not old enough to be responsible for X thing. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, you know, that, like the lady in the baker's. I'm not her yet, mm. but actually I'm probably closer to her than I think I am. Mm. Just try it. <laughs> That's true. Like, if you're not going to wear your mask, <laughs> wait outside. I, uh, I think you need just, a few more. <laughs> yeah. I'll just get a... Get, uh, get told i'm telling people off i need more gray hairs is where, where it's at oh for me you want them. <laughs> <laughs> should we should we should we touch on that i don't know like protect like trying to the yeah, plastic surgery and all that kind of thing is i look at like um because i listen to uh rupaul's podcast so they're always like rupaul's always getting like botox and like yeah, yeah, yeah. surgeries and like a lot of these drag queens have had quite a lot of surgery and miss michelle visage is you know she had to have her breast implants removed because they were causing problems but she'd had them for like years and years and you know that sort of la like we've got to kind of keep sculpting ourselves but there's nothing weird like it's just you sort of end up looking weird let's face yes. it and yeah. it, it is just i think just you know let it go. although the first when i um when i i dyed my hair once or twice maybe <laughs> and the first time like i i, I was uh, the first time i did that i was like wow i can pass i can pass again and I don't mind. I don't mind admitting it. That I don't mind. Uh, I, I've, it's sort of like something you can't be bothered to get around to. But I, I, I quite like kind of the. the I, I, yeah, I can get quite a few years back because I started graying sort of relatively early. So I've always had yeah. like a bit of like this salt and pepper going on. But it's quite nice to once in a while just go. It's just a rewind a few years. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I am. Um... 
I've got fair hair even when it's not been messed about with yeah. by my hairdresser and generally my hairdresser does a sort of the, the highlighting type thing rather than a full head of hair dye so but I just don't have that many grey hairs I've, mm. got, I've got in that regard I have good genes uh, well, in well, that it, sort of visual elements of ageing I mean I'm very happy that my hair isn't like I don't I didn't start receding young like I, I did like as I was like in my 30s I was like that's not as it's not quite where it was but like it's it's fine but actually what i decided about the hair dyeing thing was like i i, I what i don't like is this like in between bullshit like it's a bit frizzy and it's a bit like gray here and a bit dark i was like let's just like hold it back and just wait until it's proper i'll get to 50 or whatever and then i'll have proper like fully white hair and then i'll just embrace yeah, it but yeah. this sort of halfway a bit scrappy a bit messy i was like maybe i don't have to put up with this i just didn't like the way it, but i don't know i don't mind at the moment i'm fine <laughs> I mean, I, I think I've got this weird... Uh, of course, there are parts of my face I look at and I go, well, that's not quite how it used to be. Or, or what's happening with that neck? Mm. But as somebody who's... I've never worn makeup, so yeah. I've never, never particularly adult altered my face Well, you've got that, you know, if you need to, you could just, like, <laughs> level up, can you? <laughs> I don't know. I've got <laughs> to know, learn how maybe. to apply this yeah, stuff. Because every it. time I've ever done it, it's like... <laughs> what <laughs> who are you uh, <laughs> just, so, get, uh, uh, just get like one of those apps and just do it what apps you know the those beautify me give me a pretty make I look lovely as a lady I have to say I just wanted to talk about old people and technology and the, there is a thing of like someone some people embrace it and some people I'm not going to name any names but like they, they, they've sort of embraced a certain level of technology but they're not really prepared to learn anything more or change it's like move from no those pop-ups are where I like them that my toolbar in Internet Explorer is the way it's always been don't touch it that's sort of like I think that the sort of maybe for older people, the the pace at which technology has changed has made them pessimistic about how worthwhile it is to try and keep up with it or learn anything new. Well, I think it's I, I think two things on this. One, generally, in like this social care type projects I've been involved with, there's this, this kind of one of the women highlighted it very well. Like in our heads, old people are people who listen to Vera Lynn. But the old people today, it was their mum and dad mm. that used to listen to Vera Lynn. Do you know what I mean? It's like kind of a, a, a sort of a, a, there's this, I think we're slightly, dis like my mum's in her 70s mm. and she has been sending email, you know, been using the internet since 96 or 95 or whatever. So it's like, however, and she's the kind of person that has it. So first of all, this kind of blanket old people technology is can be dangerous especially when people talk about helping them and doing things yeah. for old people but i think but equally i think of all the things you want to learn it doesn't necessarily feel like it's worth the bother Do you, know what I mean? so my, like you learn my, a language yeah. yeah that's like yeah well that's that's yeah, worth that'll open a whole new thing if you if you've learned windows and gone through the pain of that and someone's like well these are kind of easier to you like, oh, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, if you yeah, kind of associate works. it with being a painful thing to figure out yeah. and you're used to it and then someone goes, do that again. You're like, oh, no, this is good yeah, enough. My, that's what my, because my mum uses Ubuntu still Ooh, and she has crazy. an Apple phone. She, yeah. So she, she does all that and then she's, and she's very comfortable and she's very confident and she's quite, I'd say quite happy that she, you know, she's like proud of herself because mm. she can do all these things. And then lockdown happened and she had to get to go on Zoom for yeah. Pilates class on her computer and I was like, Mother, look, I'll phone up, I'll phone and talk you through it. She goes, I don't want to. <laughs> she said, I think, this is her exact words, she goes, I think 
I've learnt enough yeah. and I know enough things and why want any of those things to be useful right now? And this is like, I just want to, I just want to do my Pilates. So there's a bit of that sort of like, I don't want to. And Fair it's enough. Like, I know you don't want to. But you have to. Sorry. Yeah, it's like it's like she and I have these random projects we do every so very random every so often. Like we made uh, crumpets properly from scratch, right. and just to see how it worked. And we did it. We're like, right, we've done that. Bits of rubber <laughs> and, we're and flour. Never gonna do it again. Because well, I'm glad we've seen that process, and they came up like shop bought, and then we've made right. like just random things we do. We do, yeah. but I think that she's filed it under that category of like. I wear, you know, the, there's, the actual being able to do it isn't the satisfying bit. It's where you get to, once you've done it, it's like driving. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> but I mean, it's one thing, well, I am great. The one thing I am grateful about the pandemic for is that it has made lots of people have to figure out how to do some of that stuff that I like doing things a certain way. And now everyone else has been forced how to learn how to do it that way. So it's like, I don't have to like teach anyone myself they've had to learn it another way so that's 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 been to me a positive you know for for what it's worth um but yeah i just wish uh, certain people would learn how to switch the input on the tv (laughs) it's like like, is that conceptually so complicated that you can't understand it there are different things you just have to press this button here a couple of times there it is is that so hard no no it doesn't work straight away when I turn it on. I'm not going to watch it and I'm going to complain. Is uh, Floyd, is this barking on the podcast a know. result of the gate? I have no... Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I think no. it's related to the fact that we took him on a walk and took him swimming this morning and he's soaking wet and he has to stay in the garden and every time somebody walks past right. <laughs> or a cat walks past, he's like, get off my land. I see. Uh, right, so, so that does. Mystery so solved. Close. Now I can leave the dog barks in. Okay, yeah. shall we finish? That's Floyd saying hi. Yes. Hi, Floyd. <sighs> Bye, Floyd. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. um, if you like the podcast... Go to grandpodcast.com. There's links. Yeah. You can subscribe on you can subscribe on the like in your podcast app, but you can also subscribe on YouTube and get videos. We're doing videos. This is on video. See my face, my pale face. Um where can you see my find- five year old's yoga tips mm. if you go on the video. Uh, uh people can find go on. Where sorry. can people find yeah, sorry. People can where can people <laughs> I was gonna say, how many more people do you need on your Twitter to get to ten thousand? Oh, I don't know. It's I've like no 200 idea. 200 or something. Is it? Is that so high? Follow Ivanka at Ivanka on Twitter and get her to the, the next age milestone <laughs> achievement. Um, <laughs> yes, do that. Or don't. But say hi. Um, and do go to at Ivanka on Twitter. You said that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. No, you've lost my train of thought. doesn't hurt. Yeah, uh, I, I ruined the outro. Um, you can find me at ruined. Michael Forrest on Twitter, on Instagram, on SoundCloud. You know, wherever you want. Um, MichaelForrestMusic.com and come and sign up to Dungood.app if you want to get things done. It's a, li- it's a to-do list that shows you one thing at a time. I think this is how I live my life. It's, I love it. Um, and I, you know, I think more people should try it. And, you know, just let me know you heard it on the podcast. I'll uh, see if I can do something. <laughs> Log into the uh, Stripe panel, create subscription. No payment, maybe give you like a wow. few months maybe i don't know we can we can we can come to an arrangement Just <laughs> finish it. um and um yeah and go to good Very to good. hear yeah thank you <laughs> and go to good to hear.co.uk and find all the stuff that i've spent a year oh, oh there's a blog post i'll link to in the description of this which is what i announced this week i'm quite proud of this blog post ivanka liked it why don't you have a read of it and then you'll see what i've been doing i liked it i mean you know i actually you're... said nice things to him she actually actually <laughs> followed through and tweeted about it straight away she didn't even like leave it in a tab it was nice for me um yeah there we go see you um so we'll see you next week uh bye 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 bye, bye. Yeah.